raffle restorer. Sometime before John Asmus saw it in the boot of that car. Didn't just bring that face up. Didn't just make whatever ghost or trace or possibly a Mona Lisa copy into something so much more compelling to the modern eye. To me, not to test that. Is, it, it's like a detective and his team coming to investigate the scene of a crime, the scene of a murder, and fingerprinting every square inch of it, but forgetting to take fingerprints from the knife on the bed covered with blood. I could be wrong. Maybe Leonardo did paint this face in 1503 while Lisa sat in front of him. But until the face is tested, doubt remains. And to me, she just looks a bit too 20th century. But I'm still convinced that Leonardo did paint two Mona Lisas. If the Isleworth painting isn't the earlier version, then it's either lost or still out there somewhere. And believe it or not, now there's a new lead. The reported discovery of another Mona Lisa in St. Petersburg. Russia. This really is a plunge into the unknown. All we've been told is that a wealthy Russian art collector, identity a secret, recently acquired a painting that might be the missing link to the mystery. We haven't yet been told where it is. And then, at the last minute, we're given an address. A place with a dubious past. strange. This building was created in the 19th century. This room is a recreation of an old Russian hunting lodge. It survives because the KGB made it their headquarters during the communist years. Here she is. So what is this? What is this? All I know about this picture is that it was purchased by a Russian art collector from a very old and established American family who'd had it since the end of the 18th century and has hardly been seen since. And what's the status of this picture? Smaller, the columns are more complete than they are in the version in the Louvre. <laughs> you see, they've got me going. <laughs> I'm saying the version in the Louvre, the version in the Louvre. The Mona Lisa in the Louvre. She's enigmatic. She's removed. She's distant. Is she a copy? Not sure. This picture looks tantalizingly close to the picture in the Louvre. So many details are the same. But is this Leonardo's lost earlier version? As with the Isleworth picture, scientific tests have been done by Dr. Chiara Matteucci of the University of Bologna, who's flown to Russia to share her results. Dunque, se guardiamo solo la scienza, Direi che possiamo partire dal supporto. This is the radiocarbon dating of the canvas, sì. which shows a 95.4% probability that the canvas is between 1490 and 1670. So the canvas could well be correct. Sì. OK. In realtà, chi, il dato che ci svela il possibile, il probabile periodo non è tanto la tela, ma eh, il, lo strato eh, preparatorio del, del dipinto. Al di sopra della tela 
eh, vi è la presenza di un eh, ground, di una preparazione rossa. Rossa? Rossa. Oh, that's the ground. Well, that's very clear. So, but as far as I understand it, Leonardo da Vinci himself worked on a classic Italian Renaissance ground of white. Is that right? Dunque, sì. The presence of a red ground, the very first layer of paint, seems to discount Leonardo's hand. But it's Chiara's next discovery that really changes the picture. A chemical not used before 1600. Il interessante è il aver rinvenuto nella preparazione la, il solfato del, degli, degli inclusi di solfato di bario ci può indirizzare ad un periodo eh, molto ristretto. Nel periodo tra il 1620 e il 1680 ehm, l'utilizzo della baritina eh, in queste preparazioni era molto comune in Francia, proprio Solo nell'area Francia. proprio no, sì. non è, Allora, questa è una trova uh, fisica, una, una cosa chimica. Sì, nell'area parigina eh, nel periodo che abbiamo, di cui abbiamo parlato, un, un mercante di pigmenti aveva messo a punto un, un, un prodotto proprio specifico per le preparazioni eh, in cui veniva aggiunta appunto baritina. That's sì. good. I think Chiara has done all the research we need to know. So the barium allows us to place this canvas very precisely, 1620 to 1680, and probably in Paris. So all the painters around Paris got this ground from this one guy and put it on their canvas. So more and more that I talk to you, I feel, noi parliamo italiano, e io penso che devo parlare in francese alla, alla donna qua. <laughs> je, suis, je suis enchanté de faire uh, ta connaissance Mona Lisa. Uh, tu, es, tu, es, tu es sans doute française. <laughs> So this Mona Lisa isn't a Leonardo, but a mid-17th century French copy. In fact, there are dozens of copies. It's a real problem if you believe, as I think you have to, given the conflicting evidence that Leonardo did paint two Mona Lisas. What we're looking for, then, is Leonardo's image of young Lisa, as described by Vasari, as sketched by Raphael, which must predate the famous picture in the Louvre. So where can it be? I still believe that I can get to the bottom of the mystery, because there's one very strong lead I haven't yet followed up. One more destination, Paris. A scientist turned art detective claims he can finally explain the discrepancies. He believes the secrets of the Mona Lisa lie not in other versions of the portrait, but inside the Mona Lisa itself. And he reckons he can prove it. Pascal. Welcome. Pascal Cott is one of the world's leading experts in the analysis of paintings. He's a man in Leonardo's own image a self-taught physicist, the brilliant inventor of a new technique that's unlocked the secrets of paintings by Rubens, Rembrandt, Picasso, and many others. His work on another Leonardo painting, The Lady with an Ermine, revealed earlier versions of the composition, hidden beneath its surface, that rewrote art history. But his great obsession is the Mona Lisa, faithfully reproduced here in his studio. In 2004, Pascal was invited by the Louvre to scan the painting. His task? Simply to identify the picture's original colours, hidden beneath the discolorations of time. But Pascal's technique also revealed that there was far more going on beneath the surface. For the last decade, he's worked, in secret, decoding those discoveries. And now, he's ready to share them. So our goal is to peel like an onion <laughs> all the layer of paint 
to reconstruct the chronology of the construction of the painting. So is this and new? Is this a new? This is a new technique, absolutely. Pascal's secret weapon is his groundbreaking multi-spectral camera, an invention truly worthy of Leonardo. 13 different wavelengths of color are projected onto the picture, each penetrating the paint surface to a different depth. The camera captures the reflections, generating over three billion bits of data and thousands of images. By analyzing each image shown in black and white, Pascal can reveal a painting's secrets, layer by layer. His first discovery in the Mona Lisa is buried deep within the painting. What we discover, we discover that the head was bigger. So you, you see a shadow yes, of a bigger that. head. Mm. You can see also that the nose is double here. Oh. Wow. So once she had a larger head. And I discovered this hand much more bigger. Pascal has pieced together several previously unknown details that lie beneath the Louvre portrait as we know it. Marked in red, they seem to be elements of a larger first portrait that never got beyond a draft stage. But that's just the beginning of Pascal's discoveries. So now we will continue with one other layer. Voilà, here we are. What on earth is that? What is it? This is a hairpin. Like this one. So you found... Something like you, this. You found... An, it, with that little bit of your magic light camera, you found a missing hairpin. Now you know there is a hairpin. You can see it. Ha! Ah. Because you know. But, yes, no, exactly. How fascinating. And more than that, if you look around the head, you discover 12 hairpins. <laughs> the hairpins with pearls make no sense on the first large portrait. But Pascal has found something else that appears to be connected to them. Tiny rows of dots, known as spolvery. They seem to suggest an elaborate headdress. Intriguingly, a type of headdress that, as far as we know, was only ever shown on the heads of saints or madonnas. This is a painting of a headdress that have nothing to do with Mona Lisa. Nothing to do with Mona Lisa? Nothing to do with Mona Lisa. The spolvery hidden inside the Mona Lisa have never been seen before. They're concrete proof of the way Leonardo constructed a picture. He would have begun with a preparatory drawing, marked the lines on tracing paper with a sharp point, then transferred those outlines onto the wood with coal dust. But what happened to the headdress? Pascal's next piece of evidence suggests it was deliberately removed. So now I discover this hatching. You see this hatching? This is another layer of your... Yeah, another... another of the layer. onion. So this is Leonardo with his rubber. Yes. You see, it's totally different from the cracks. It's not craquelure, no. You, you see, this is clearly to erase what is behind. It's very important because that explains how Leonardo, from one stage, go to another stage. Pascal's scans are crucial evidence of the way Leonardo worked building up a painting stage by stage. Above the scratchings, Pascal reveals the first impression of yet another layer, the ghostly imprint of a face, like a Leonardo Turin shroud. Is that another head? Yes, 